Thank you for coming to the uh, January Principals Coffee and Happy New Year. Um, from the last time that we met in uh, November till now, seems like you know a lifetime has gone by. But uh, before we know it, we our seniors will be heading out on internship and uh, we'll be starting the uh, the end of the year routine. So I know it seems like we're in the uh, the midst of it now, but thank you for coming in. I really appreciate uh, everybody coming in to uh, to go through this Principal's Coffee. We have a uh, very interesting day today with a lot to cover, and um, the agenda is up here on the, uh, on the overhead. And uh, I'm gonna let our students um, introduce themselves, but before that, I wanted to introduce Ms. Joanna Lewick and Ms. Laura Dubach, who are um, the facilitators for our Acting with Integrity Group Committee. All right, so welcome. So anyway, this is the acting, well, this is a sample, actually, of the Acting with Integrity Committee. And it's actually a group of parents, and we'd be happy to have more parents join us, but one of our parents are, are, is Holly Levy, and she's here with us on the group this year. But we all welcome other parents and their input at any time and in different ways. Um, but this is a sampling of our students, so we're, we're going to just have you say your name, your grade, and how long you've been on the committee. Okay, so hi, I'm Libby Madowitz. I'm a sophomore, and this is my first year on the committee. I'm Raquel Kanner, I'm a sophomore, and this is also my first year on the committee. I'm Olivia Frischman, I'm a junior, and this is my second year on the committee. I'm Leah Weinfeld, I'm also a junior, and this is my third year on the committee. I'm Emily Tillinger, I'm a senior, and this is my second year on the committee. And Leah's older brother uh, was actually one of the founding <coughs> members. We've actually been doing this uh, group for about six years. Uh, this is year six. So it's hard, if you notice, to watch the news and not realize the challenges of and need for integrity. And around here at Byron Pills, we've decided that integrity is a lifestyle choice that needs to be made. And in the early years, we actually talked about academic integrity. It started out as the Academic Integrity Committee, and it was a response to a student survey that was taken. Um, but what we did in a couple years in was decide that it was more about than just academics. It was more about integrity in all areas of our life. So um, what we've kind of done over these six years is evolved, and we've evolved into an organization that now has a very, very important mission. And so yeah. go ahead, tell us so about the, the mission. So the goal of this club is to spread uh, awareness of some things su such as like um, fa fairness and uh, honesty that are not only in our community but um, out, outside, outside of our school and how to kind of spread it to everyone's lives. Thank you so much, Raquel. And we believe in this mission, and we do a lot of different things to make it happen. We, again, have done some things in the past. Like in the early years, we spent some time fleshing out an honor code. Um, so we were like, all right, what would be something that would capture the values that we stand for? And so as you kind of take a look, these are the things that we as students and a parent and, and, and teachers and administrators kind of decided captured what we're really what we really stand for um, so that was one of our past accomplishments and we also did um, we created a public service announcement and we use this public service announcement in different ways it's part of our presentations we as we'll be talking about a little bit we go into the eighth grade into the ninth grade and we use that public service announcement to kind of spread the message so let's go back to that for just a quick second we're not going to Without any words, right? Without without speaking, it speaks volumes. 
Um, and so we use that in, in some of our presentations. So again, the public service announcement, we've done the honor code, and we also, well, we'll have actually um, our students talk a minute about the poster contest. So these are the, our core activities. We push into the ninth grade, the eighth grade, and to the health classes. We're gonna present to faculty at a, a faculty meeting in a couple of weeks. And then obviously the poster contest is part of that. So let's have um, Leah so talk about the eighth grade presentation. In December, our committee went into the classes of the eighth grade classes of the middle school and we did some activities and played some games with the eighth graders where integrity is questioned and we see how they responded and we would help them like with better ways to respond to it and how they can handle situations like these. And we basically go into eighth, the eighth grade classes because we want to start promoting good behaviors and what integrity is like in high school from a young age. So we think the earlier that we can start promoting integrity and these good attitudes, the better. And we like to go in and so that next year they have a familiar face and they're not overwhelmed by everything in the high school. And at the end, we handed out cards to, for them to share what their favorite part was or something that they learned and all the feedback was really great and the kids were really excited about it and you could tell that they were looking forward for, to high school and they were happy that we introduced them to this. Um, so as a senior mentor myself we always promote integrity in the classroom every day um, but with the help of other people in the committee we went into all the mentor classrooms and we as in, as in eighth grade, we introduced this concept, and in ninth grade, we kind of introduced a more um, a way that they could relate to it. So we gave them scenarios that they could relate to, and that they might be going through in high school, and how they could kind of solve them and proceed with integrity. So it could be in the social scene, academic, or athletic. And um, we our goal was to challenge their ideas and their thoughts, and see what they can come up with to solve these problems, and what advice we can give to them. Thank you, Emily. We also um, have them at, it's a two day activity, so the second day the senior mentors give them an example like this of a poster that students made in the past, and they kind of show us what they got out of the lesson by making their own poster, and it's a contest between the mentor classes, and um, we, as a committee, we kind of look at them and see what the students got out of it, what their ideas were, and how we can make them better. And this is a way that the students could express themselves through these posters. So for the 10th graders, it's a little bit different because we know they've already been through this twice and they've already obviously completed a year of high school. So this is kind of more of a follow-up and seeing how far they've come and what they think and how they've grown in their perception of integrity. So one of the games we play is called Waxman's Believe It or Not. And in that, we give them little scenarios and they say, do they think it's real or fake? And we get to discuss it and hear their thoughts. Okay, so throughout the rest of the year and for future years, we're really just trying to work to create a greater awareness of our message and spread it around our community. So we'll do that by um, making like people more aware of our honor code and also working with our presentations and revising them over the years, making them more relatable to the kids who we're like, presenting to. And with that, we'll also update our PSA so that the kids can relate to you know, familiar faces that they know in the school. And throughout this year, we're hoping to have like a big sale so that during lunch, you know, we can spread our message and you know, people enjoy big sale. Um, and then also, um, we're looking into getting t-shirts that we can wear during our presentations and on certain days just so people you know, are aware of our message. Again, when you're trying to change a culture, you you can't just do it by talking only to the students. You can't do it just by, you know, talking to parent you know, administrators. You have to and teachers. You have to also talk to the parents. So, your involvement would be appreciated and welcome at any time. All right. Thank so, you. students, when you're talking to your peers, what do they report as being the thing that makes them maybe not act with integrity? What's the thing that pressures them the most? Um, I feel like maybe like in school just like doing like really well like you know grade wise and like I feel like sometimes people can get like dishonest when they feel really pressured and like they feel like they can't live up to like their standards. Yeah, going off what Lizzie said, there's such a high standard in our school and like it's pretty competitive here and so 
a lot of people are going to think that like if you're not doing well, it's a problem. And so people are some people are willing to do whatever it takes to get that grade. And sometimes your integrity is questioned and it's not always easy to do the right thing. It's easier to do the wrong thing because it's easy and convenient. But we believe that once you can make the right decision and do the right thing for yourself, that's honest. That's just integrity like with it. So how have you found it to be possible to operate without feeling that pressure or feeling that pressure and not taking those chances? I think that it's really kind of learning and training yourself to be able to look at a situation and say, okay, I need this grade or I need to impress my friends or whatever, but being able to compartmentalize and think, okay, that's what they want me to do. My parents want me to get this grade, but really how am I going to respond to this and how am I going to act with integrity and change the scenario so that I can be benefited the best as possible without having to be dishonest. And how do you feel the Acting uh, with Integrity Committee has um, been viewed by the, uh, the students over the past few years? I think that starting with the eighth graders, we get a lot of feedback from them when, on their exit cards. And this year especially, we got to read some of them. And a lot of them said that they didn't realize how important integrity was and they didn't realize that they had to, that there was so much involved that they had to do in order to act with integrity. And after listening to us, and I think that sitting here with you guys, talking to you, like being able to sit in on with the teachers, like with all the different grades, I think we really get our message out there. And I think once people learn more about our club and learn more about how integrity can benefit you, because what Liv, like what Liv said, you don't want to do it for other people, you want to do it for yourself, and it feels a lot better when you get a good grade on your own merit rather than cheating or doing it for a parent or anybody else. So I think for us, we've learned and watched all the different scenarios that could happen when people don't act with integrity, but we also are aware of the feeling that when we do act with integrity and when we get that grade or when we win that game or when we do something on our own merit, it feels a lot better. So what our audience's parents and Bobcat TV will be sending this out to parents as well. What can you tell to the parents out there that would help to reinforce um, all of the goals of the committee? How can parents help? Um, well, initially it really starts at home. So like if kids are at home and they're seeing like their parents I guess act with integrity because it's not just a problem among children like it's a people of all ages sometimes adults struggle with integrity so it's something that they see at home and I know that I pretty much do what, like I follow what my mom does and so if I see my mom doing something right I'm gonna want to do it because my mom did it and I know that it's the right thing so it really it's like habits at home that start it and like promoting that stuff in my house. I think you guys are like our role models and your kids look up to you and like Leah said mirror pretty much everything you do because growing up that's the only thing we knew was to watch you guys and like just do like be like mom like that's all I wanted to do is be like my mom like and I think all of your kids definitely feel the same way looking up to you guys and if it starts at home regardless of what it is like if it's like apologizing to your sibling or realizing yourself like I did the wrong thing, I need to apologize. And I think that learning that at home is really important and definitely something that as kids we bring to school and we bring to sports teams and we bring to taking tests. And I think it's really important that it does start at home because if it's not happening there, it's not gonna happen anywhere else. You know, one of the things we've learned, at least I've learned in our research is when you think before you act, it's much better. So like on the top of my test, it says act with integrity. Before you even take the test, remind, we remind our students that, that that's, you know, it, it's, it don't wait till the opportunity presents itself, think ahead. And so conversations that you can have, because the pressures are very, are very, are really tough. It really is. Your friends want your help and you want to give it to them because it's a relationship question, but it's also an integrity question. I think on the other end, one of our goals this year is to work with our faculty, which is a, a new event for us. Um, and part of that is saying, okay, we're all human, we're going to make mistakes, um, but it's really important to act with integrity after the mistake and just try to own up to it and fix it um, as best as we can. So that's a new branch of our group that we're going to be working on. All right, so shifting gears, uh, we heard her uh, already, but I want to introduce Dr. Ellen Med, who is our new school psychologist. 
She is uh, our most veteran psychologist in the district, and uh, she is taking over for Mr. Sean Dolinar, who uh, accepted a job out of state uh, shortly before the break. So I begged and pleaded with Ellen to come up to the high school, and um, you know, it, it takes a lot for somebody who has been in a building for as long as she was to uh, say that she was willing to come up to the high school. And um, it was because I know how good she is with dealing with kids and connecting with families uh, that I wanted her to come up here. So um, although uh, she was reluctant at first, uh, I'm very happy that she's here with us now. So um, this is her, her contact info, extension 4956, and then emed at byronhills.org. Ellen, you want to say a quick hello? Well, it's <laughs> I feel like I've been dropped on another planet. <laughs> but I am adjusting. Tomorrow will be two weeks, I think, right? <laughs> so it's a huge learning curve, but the faculty has been so amazingly welcoming. And the common denominator is I know a lot of the kids, I know a lot of the parents, and so it's kind of interesting to see what's happened to children when I last saw them in fifth grade. Some of them look just the same. Some of them I don't recognize at all. Um, the kids I was worried about are doing fine, and some of the kids, you know, who I didn't know are having some issues. So, from my perspective, it's it's a very interesting you know, change, and I'm learning a ton, and I feel like I finally got out of elementary school. <laughs> so, call me if you have any issues or concerns, and I'll be chairing a lot of the um, most of the CSE and 504 meetings. So, if you have any. Um, so welcome, Ellen. Thank you again. And um, you know, it was uh, it, it is very uh, hard. I yeah, you know, I understand. Twenty six years being in a building, coming up here, um, starting new and starting fresh. And I've just been so impressed with the the way that Ellen has just jumped in and uh, and and you know become a part of our community just in the uh, the first two weeks. So thank. you. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad to be here. So I want to tell you about a couple of key changes that we're doing in social studies. I want to update you on the new format of the Regents exam starting this year and going forward, and then do a little quick update on Global Scholars so we can kind of see what's going on. So the first change I want to uh, mention is that we have a new AP course for the first time that we're going to offer next year, and it's called AP Government and Politics. <coughs> and it's an, it's an exciting course because it's really like, for those of you who took um, an introduction to poli-sci uh, course when you were back in college, sort of that similar concept where you really get a deep dive understanding of the American government and how it works. And you know, if we think about it, what, what skill do we really want kids to leave in terms of social studies as new voters? We want them to be engaged in the political process and understand the political process. So we've been thinking about this for a couple of years and uh, we thought this would really be the time to, uh, to kind of go for it. Um, and they also just recently changed the course too to add a new component where uh, the students are going to actually do an applied civics participation project. So they actually have to do something in which they advocate for some sort of political change in their own local community or wider community. And that really fits a lot of our objectives as a district where we want authentic, active learning. And so we thought this really sort of makes sense as well. The other reason it fit is it's actually considered a semester uh, AP class. Now some schools might offer it for the whole year, but really they say it could be taught within a semester. And one of the things we wanted to think about is how do we take a little bit of pressure off kids to take challenging courses but also meet all their state requirements. And so what we've decided to do, because it's considered that semester course, is to integrate the economics requirement, which is our state requirement, into the course. And so by students taking that one year course, they could satisfy that whole requirement. Um, and the nice thing is, it's gonna be integrated naturally. I mean, you can't look at our political system without thinking about economics and how our market system works and you know all of the decisions that we make uh, as a government that have economic uh, ramifications. So it's gonna be sort of a natural integrated fix there. The other thing, though, that we're going to add that's, that's very explicit is we think it's very important 
for all students to have a solid background in financial literacy before they, they leave uh, our nest and head out there. So that's going to be a, an important uh, unit that will be included in that course as well. So we're excited about that, and I think the initial buzz am amongst the kids is that they're excited as well. Uh, and we also feel that it's a doable AP, particularly for kids who maybe haven't tried one yet. And we're really working as a social studies department to encourage students to reach for higher level courses, particularly at least once before they graduate. Uh, and this would be a good uh, you know, step in for a kid who maybe hadn't tried one yet. So that's the plan in terms of that. And since we were making those changes, we made a couple of other ones to sort of fit in. So we've been offering AP Human Geography for a few years. Now, similar to AP Government, that is technically a one semester class, but we've been offering it for a whole year. And really the intention was, it's kind of similar, that we want kids to reach. We want them to try something new. And this was a good sort of reachable first try for an AP exam. But as we've been examining the curriculum over a couple of years, what we've noticed is there is a lot of economics integrated into that curriculum already. They look at um, globalization as a major theme. That's one of our state uh, requirements in terms of economics. They look at economic relationships. They look at the market system. And all of that is integrated. So I've asked the teacher of that course over the last couple of years to start to consider is there enough room and space to integrate economics fully so kids could get that credit? So she's been sort of taking a careful look and really feels that we can do it. So that's a second change that we're going to make. So students could take into, get their full economics credit within the AP Yuma Geography. So that will start uh, as well for next year. Um, and that's a course, if I say for the kids, for the AP government, it's for those kids who are, you know, hopefully sort of political junkies. They're watching the news every night. They're fascinated. For this course, these are those kids who are just really interested in the world around them. Like, how is it changing? And how is it so integrated? And this course is really based all in the modern world. Issues that are happening now, uh, from migration, to globalization, uh, to the change of urban environments. And a kid who's really interested in sort of that big picture um, look at how the world is really evolving and changing and integrating, this is sort of their course. So we're excited about that. Now there's a third option um, for kids who want to take an AP, and that's our AP human, sorry, AP European history. And we've had this one for years and years and years. Now this one's a full year. Uh, history course and it's considered a two semester course in college. So for this one there really isn't the space to add that economics credit. You know we looked at it and considered it but it's really not there and the, um, the content doesn't align. This is a great course for your history lovers. The kids who just really can't get enough and particularly if they took AP world history which looks sort of at the big picture changes of the world and if they followed up with AP US history, which zeroed in, this is sort of a nice complement because now they're going to take all those historical thinking skills that we've been working on for years and really do a nice deep dive into European history. Um, so for those kids, this is a great, great course for them. They will, though, have to take economics. Okay, so just so you understand. So that's sort of the status quo. It'll remain. Uh, just because of the, the rigor of that course and the fact that it's a two-semester college course uh, taught in one year. Okay. Um, and then just to give you an update on the Regents exam, um, so we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this new change for probably six or seven years. So finally this year is the year. So uh, does anybody have a 10th grader in the, in the room? Okay. Oh, look at this. Good. So uh, your guys will take the first brand new Regents exam. Um, which is only on 10th grade material. Last year's kids also had a 10th grade material, but in case you don't know the history, the Regents exam used to be 9th and 10th grade, and it was a little bit of a bear. Uh, not, it didn't really affect our kids too badly, but statewide, it was really the one Regents exam that prevented kids from graduating from high school. Um, and so the state started to sort of relook at it. They redid their framework, K to 12. And social studies as a field has really changed 
in that, you know, you know, back when we were kids, it was about memorizing dates and people and lots of flashcards, and that's how you could sort of get by. And now it's much more about the thinking, and it's the skills of a historian. How do you actually analyze evidence to understand the past? And so the AP exams have changed to reflect that over the past three or four years, and the Regents is in similar alignment, which is sort of perfect when everything you're you know, grooming kids for is right here. And so uh, the new exam will be in, uh, in this June, and so it's based on conceptual understanding, so those are bigger ideas, and then it's based on these historical thinking skills. Um, all of the multiple choice questions will be based on the stimulus. So that means like a reading passage, a map, a political cartoon. And you won't be able, you, the answer won't be, you know, like one word answers. You know, which of the following, which guy said this? And then here's a quote. It'll be much more about do I understand the passage or the text? Can I interpret it? And can I apply a skill? Okay, which is a higher level, but more relevant, I think. Um, then there's also a part called constructed response questions, and again, that'll be stimulus based. So you might have two different uh, passages, and the kids in a little response may have to compare them, or they might have to talk about cause and effect, or they might have to read a passage and talk about how reliable is this as a source. Okay, so all of these skills are going to be integrated. And then the last piece is an enduring issues essay. And if you, you have older kids, you've heard about the DVQ, the DVQ, we've had that for years. Well, it's sort of a version of that, but it's, you know, the kids will have five documents, and what they're gonna have to do is pull out what's considered an enduring issue. So an enduring issue meaning something that's sort of lasted over time. You know, that could be anything like political conflict. Uh, environmental issues, human <coughs> rights abuses, one of these sort of big ideas, and then they have to defend how that is a significant issue and it's changed over time using the evidence in the document. Okay? Now these are skills that we've been working on in Byron Hills for like six or seven years. Um, we were ready. We were just waiting for the regions to sort of catch up with us. Um, but you, 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 you'll see this different on the home front because it's, these aren't the tests that you can just make a whole bunch of index cards, you know, and flashcards and study for. It's much more about conversations and thinking about the history. You know, so for those of you who like to help study at home, you want to ask questions like compare questions. Well, can you compare those two different places? Or cause and effect questions. Uh, or change and continuity questions. So you want to really be talking more about sort of the developments and less about sort of discrete individual facts, okay? Now this happens to be given a little bit early. The state does this, so it'll be June 3rd. When there's a brand new type of a Regents, they, uh, they have you do it a few weeks early because then we send the papers in and then they come up with some sort of a matrix in terms of calculating the final score. So just adds, you know, we miss a couple of weeks of instruction, which is kind of a bummer, but we know about it, so we're planning for it. So, so just so you have that uh, on your agendas. Uh, All right, last one. I just want to give an update and see if anybody has questions on the Global Scholars Program. Um, and you know, just a quick pitch in case you don't know about it. It's an interdis interdisciplinary program that combines uh, different parts of the humanities, world languages, the arts. And really the idea is to look at sort of the problems and global issues of the world today, uh, develop an understanding but most importantly, do something about it and take action. And so we've just finished our second year of the program, um, and we are heading into year three. So year three, well, let me just do a quick review in case you don't know anything. Year one of the program is an introduction to sort of big global issues around the world uh, by using the UN Sustainability Development Goals as our content. And the students really learn in an eye-opening way some of the issues that are going on in terms of human rights, poverty, the environment, uh, what are sort of the greatest challenges in the world today. And they start to work on these skills that help them develop action plans uh, to address those needs. Um, and that's in the year, year um, one of the program. With the idea that they're starting to sort of hone in on a, a, a level of something that really interests them personally, that they really, really care about, 
that they might want to pursue if they stay for year two of the program. And so for the students in year two, they um, start with whatever that issue of interest is, and they do really in-depth research about it, learn all about that issue from lots and lots of different sources, and then start to develop an action plan to make a difference, um, and then actually apply that action plan. And then the students who come back in year three are gonna be sort of doing two parts. One will be to continue that action plan and we're looking into the submission to some sort of a contest. There, the UN sponsors one, and there's some others that we're investigating, so they could sort of get their work recognized formally mm -hmm. through some sort of a contest. Um, they're also going to be doing some explicit leadership training, and those students will work as mentors for the year one and two kids as well. So we're sort of integrating the program together. Um, and then uh, we have this big end of year box summit for freshmen, and so the Global Scholars Three kids will be in charge of planning and organizing and sort of putting that all together. So um, it's been a really exciting couple of years. The students who started with us are invaluable because they're really helping us learn and grow the program and they're really inspiring. Some of the things that, um, that they're doing and really stretching themselves and just the real life skills that they're learning and anything from you know, how do you write a professional letter, an email? How do you call somebody on the phone and request something? Um, and uh, we do elevator pitches. How do you pitch your idea in less than a minute? How do you take a gigantic task and break it into doable pieces? Um, all things that we, we really hope would be transferable no matter where the kids go uh, in their lives. So, so we're super excited about that. Um, myself, Melissa Stoll, and Dwayne Smith, are the kind of leaders of the program. Lisa Squadron is also one of the teachers, and we're looking to expand it even more as the program grows. All right, so shifting gears, uh, just a quick update on the prom. We'll be doing this at every one of the uh, principal's coffees, and we will be having a, uh, a parent-student um, uh, session coming up uh, within uh, uh, next month. So again, held on uh, Thursday, June 13th, at Glen Island Harbor in New Rochelle. So this is new for us because we were one of the only schools that actually had the prom on a Saturday, and we've shifted that to a Thursday. Also new for us because we were the only um, school that told our kids to show up in New York City on their own and dropped them off and said, get home anyway. Um, and we were the only ones that had it on a boat. So now we actually have it at uh, Glen Island Harbor Club in New Rochelle which many of our families are familiar with. Um, so transportation, thanks to uh, the generosity of the PTSA, um, they've given us some money going towards uh, JNR coach buses. So all the students will arrive here at the school, we'll get them checked in, we'll get them on the buses, we'll bring them over to um, uh, Glen Island Harbor Club, <coughs> and then they'll get back on the buses, they'll come back here, and uh, we'll let them We'll let them go off to wherever their weekends take them, or their night, since it's a Thursday. Um, but again, students are going to start arriving here at 5 p.m. We're still working with the PTSA and the Great Activity Board for a lot of different activities that will go on while they're here. Some of the ideas are the red carpet or the step and repeat, um, having photographers here, having photos here. Um, we want to really make it a much nicer a DJ here, a much nicer community event. We want to invite parents and students to actually see it. In the past, it was all done at some house uh, somewhere in Armonk. Somebody opened it up, or they had these uh, pre-prom parties that you know other members of the community really didn't get involved with. Um, and now we want to do that at here. We want to do it at the school, bring it back to uh, the community, make it a real community event. Um, we're going to be uh, having a parent meeting and students in February to go over the full details. I just have to get the, um, uh, the theater at the right time. So uh, that, a blast will be sent out. But again, our great activity board working with uh, Ms. Rents and Dr. Apt and Ms. Croak. Uh, they've been working on sort of the specifics of it and we'll have more at the end of uh, next month. Again, I really want to make a uh, pitch for uh, Denise Pope. She's coming on February 4th. Uh, she is the founder of Challenge Success and somebody that um, 
you know, that we have really been working closely with her and her organization over the last uh, year and a half. Um, she will be presenting to our 10th and 11th grade students during that school day. Um, during the school day, she's, she's um, going to be presenting the 10th and 11th graders on uh, the recent white paper that has come out um, that really examines and takes a deep dive into the issues that go along with college rankings and college selectivity and engagement in college. So they did a real big meta study and they looked at a lot of the things that really matter towards a student or towards an undergraduate success. And I think for a lot of people, um, it would sort of reinforce some of the feelings that they might have, but something that might be different from what the buzz in the community is. So I really want to uh, invite all parents uh, to come. We have the links up here. Um, they will also be posted on the uh, Facebook page and I'll be blasting them out as well. So we have uh, reserved your seats through uh, the brown paper tickets. It's the same service that we use for our productions in the uh, fine arts department, the musicals. And then also uh, the newsletter. So we have our parent newsletter that uh, is going out now just to make sure that we are trying to reach all stakeholders in this work that we are doing. So this will be blasted out as well. And once again, another uh, call, any parent that is uh, interested in this work and wants to be part of our uh, committee, um, just let me know, send me an email and we'd be happy to have you. Perfect. All right, so this is uh, the parent newsletter and we're gonna meet probably every, uh, at least every quarter to try to get one out. Um, but this basically just gives uh, parents an update on what the steering committee has been doing, what we're doing here at school to make sure that um, everybody is all on the same page. So just really helpful information and about uh, things that you could be doing at home to reinforce uh, the good work that we're doing here. Uh, here is the flyer um, for the uh, Denise Pope presentation. What do college rankings really measure? Are students who attend more selective colleges better off later in life? And what does the right fit mean and why does it matter? So just really making sure that we're, um, that we're having a, a deep discussion about that. Uh, here we go. This is uh, the link for tickets. Uh, you, even though it has that, they are free of charge. You just want to reserve your spot. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you.